Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Conrad Gorlinski. Let's see what's in the news. Well, the 45th day of Russia's aggression against Ukraine has passed. Uh, the headquarters of the Ukrainian Armed Forces said that the Russian army was continuing preparations for the offensive in the east of the country in order to take full control of the Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts. Kramatorsk became the next site of a criminal attack by the Russians. This is not the end of the tragedy that has been taking place in Ukraine for six weeks now. As a result of Russia's military actions, more innocent people are losing their lives. Ukraine Forum Agency reported that the death toll of yesterday's attack on the train station in Kramatorsk in the Donetsk region has risen to 52. At the time of the attack, there were about 4,000 people waiting for evacuation. They were mainly women, children and the elderly. There were many killed and wounded here. There were ambulances, police, fire trucks. Cars were on fire nearby. It was hell on earth. I was driving, so I immediately pulled up to the police and asked what help was needed. They said the injured had to be moved. I took the injured people who were already bandaged and received first aid and took them to the hospital. They all had shrapnel wounds. There were almost 40 people killed here. After Bucha and Irping Hostomel, now Russian soldiers are wrecking havoc in other Ukrainian cities. According to the Ukrainian authorities, among the victims of war crimes found there are, among others, corpses of raped women, representatives of local authorities and children. Fire started, tanks appeared, we escaped to the basement. We were there for a few days. We came here and saw that the house was bombed. They just pulled my kids out from under the rubble. For 36 days, people were lying under the rubble and the Russians were shooting, not letting them pull them out. How to tell a child that mom is not there nor dad? I don't know what to do. In connection with the discovery of the mass grave in Buta, the exhumation of the murdered Ukrainian citizens began on Friday. Experts and investigators work there and witnesses are interviewed. Of the 20 bodies, 18 have gunshot wounds and glass wounds. From these 20 bodies, we were able to identify two women. One of them worked in a supermarket in the city center. There are witnesses who can confirm that these people were killed by Russian forces. No reason, just walking down the street or while evacuating. Some of them just spoke Ukrainian. The Russians continue their offensive around Kharkiv. Only in the last 24 hours, the aggressors shot at the central districts of the city and the suburbs about 50 times. This is our part of the house. In the morning, everything was scattered on the ground. I was repairing a bicycle. I went out into the yard and saw objects like little clouds in the sky. At first I thought it was anti-aircraft defense, but it looked like a missile with five missiles. One flew over there causing a loud explosion. Then the second landed here, and the third there. There was an explosion. The windows started shaking. We ran to the bathroom and heard a very loud explosion. The president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, during a meeting with the chairman of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, pointed to the need to impose further effective sanctions on Russia. The question of sanctions we talked about today is that of the European Union's diplomatic weapon against any country's aggression. Today, unfortunately, we are dealing with an enemy, a state that wants to occupy and occupy other people's territories. Therefore, I believe that the most powerful thing to do is in depth developing sanctions and implementing them so that Russia cannot bypass them. The Ukrainian soldiers, in turn, repel the offensive of Russian troops in all directions. In the past 24 hours, Ukrainian forces repulsed seven enemy attacks in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions, destroying nine tanks and seven armored vehicles. The general staff of the Ukrainian armed forces has given an estimate of the aggressor's losses, including over 19,000 soldiers, 705 tanks and 151 aircraft. According to the information provided by Ukrainian soldiers, a Russian special forces unit with experience in hostilities in Syria completely refused to participate in any further attempts to storm Mariupol. In the fights with the armed forces from April 2nd to 4th, this unit lost about 30 soldiers. And today in Warsaw, President Andrzej Duda, together with the head of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, took part in the Stand Up for Ukraine event.
Uh, this undertaking brought together politicians, artists, businessmen, and volunteers from all over the world in helping Ukraine. Uh, the meeting, initiated by the European Commission and the Canadian government in cooperation with the international organization Global Citizen, was held at the Palace on the Isle in the Royal Wajenki Park in Warsaw. It's symbolic that we are meeting here in Warsaw. Poland has been a frontline century country in the, in the face of the Russian war against Ukraine. In so many respects, my compatriots have been the first to help. Thanks to them, Poland is a country where the largest number of Ukrainians have found home. I'm glad that my dear friend, President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, is joining us today. He is an example of a true leader and the hero of our, of our time a message of hope to the brave Ukrainian soldiers, heroes defending their country from the aggressor. Dear brothers and sisters, you are not alone. I was yesterday in Kyiv, and I visited Bucha. And there are no words for the horror I've seen in Bucha, the ugly face of Putin's army terrorizing people. And I have so much admiration for our brave Ukrainian friends fighting against this. They are fighting our war. It's our fight. 45 days of a full-scale war and defense against Russians' attack. The attack by the largest country in the world, the largest by its territory, the largest by its aggressiveness, the largest by its impunity, Russian leadership failed to account for one fact, the fact that it attacks the other largest country in the world, Ukraine, the largest by its courage. We have not afraid of massive missile strikes. We have asked for weapons. We have asked for financial assistance. We have asked for support to Ukrainian migrants, for those 10 million people forced by Russian to flee their homes. The democratic world had the power to help. And as the rest of the world puts the COVID hysteria behind them, the Chinese National Health Commission is ramping up mass testing again, and as a result, reporting thousands of new cases. Shanghai, a city of 26 million people, is still in a complete lockdown. The streets of Shanghai are deserted as millions remain under a strict lockdown. No new deaths were reported on Wednesday, but four suspected cases, all imported ones, were found in Shanghai. Thousands of medics from all over China have rushed to Shanghai to aid the megacity in taming the resurgent COVID-19 outbreak, with support teams being dispatched to temporary hospitals across the city. The first batch of medics sent by East China's Shandong province on Tuesday entered a centralized quarantine center in Shanghai's Shuhu district. The isolation facility has been set up in a renovated warehouse and has over 1,200 beds. It mainly receives infected people who are displaying mild symptoms as well as asymptomatic carriers. On April 7th, officials said there were 322 new symptomatic cases and 19,660 new asymptomatic in the previous 24 hours in a city with more than 26 million residents. Shanghai Deputy Mayor Chen Tong said authorities were working to address supply chain issues in response to complaints of food shortages. Sometimes the daily supplies cannot reach the doorsteps of our residents, he said during a press conference, adding that the city was making every possible effort to address the issue. The people of Shanghai began singing out of their windows as a way to relieve their restlessness. A Weibo user posted a video where a government drone, in response to the singing, was flown among the residential buildings broadcasting the words, Please comply with COVID restrictions. Control your soul's desire for freedom. Do not open the window or sing. The situation there is truly entering the realm of dystopia. And finally, yesterday, long-distance runner Oz Perlman uh, broke the world record for the most miles ever run around Central Park as part of a fundraiser for Ukraine. 
Late on Friday night, Pearlman completed the 17th loop of the park, over 100 miles, breaking the earlier record of 16 loops. He said he had dug in to run his fastest 100 miles ever. Pearlman celebrated briefly with friends and family and posed with a Ukraine flag. Then he continued his run, aiming to set a new world record. Pearlman is no stranger to long distance running. He's competed multiple ultra distance runs, including the 153 mile long Spartathlon in Greece. To get through the rough patches, he relies on music, energy gels, mango nectar, and training his mind to stay in the moment. Feel great, feel great. I did a little, I didn't do the smartest thing, which is I decided at a certain point that I'm gonna run my fastest 100 mile ever. I dropped Boreello like a bad habit. <laughs> and at mile quarter 86, mile, I started mile. pumping up the music. All the camera people heard me sing off key for like 14 miles. They need hazard pay. And then I just went to town. Caffeine just killed it. Just the last 14 miles, everything I had, ran my fastest 100 mile by over two hours. And what do we just do? We just shaved four hours off the record. And the record's not done. We're gonna keep going. Previously, the fastest known time for the Central Park Loop Challenge was held by Robbie Ballinger. He completed 16 loops, nearly 100 miles in March 2021, in just over 18 hours. As usual, thanks for joining us this evening. Please stay with us for Poland Daily Weather, Poland Daily Business, and other programs. But from me, let's have a wonderful Saturday night.